This is a furtherance of the notes that are posted today and it's in preparation to help prepare students for the quiz tomorrow. It's regarding the quiz is on kinematics which is the description of motion. So uh, the example I gave in class was this one. The guy starts in the rafters so he starts in the rafters, he's holding on, his position is, is high, and he lets go. The moment he lets go, his position starts to become uh, lower and lower to the ground. He starts with zero velocity, and he begins to move downwards. He accelerates downwards, that means his uh, speed increases uh, more and more each moment downwards so he has a downwards velocity in downwards increasing velocity uh, until he reaches this point of contact with the trampoline the trampoline very quickly slows him down to zero and launches him back up where he just is able to capture the rafter where he comes to rest again. Alright, let's see if we can understand that. Uh, the first moments here, he lets go and begins to fall. He accelerates downwards until he reaches the surface of the mat. Let's make sense of that over here in the motion diagram. He's up in the rafters, he lets go, and he's slow he's at, at first he's uh, I mean it's it's all rather quick uh, in the video but relatively slowly he starts to fall from the rafters each moment goes by a greater and greater distance is covered indicating uh, that his velocity is increasing downwards and this longest distance between uh, moments in time indicates the highest speeds are reached here or the the largest velocities the, the direction is downwards I've indicated here at the surface of the trampoline I've indicated a y uh, axis upwards which we're going to consider the positive direction y axis downwards we're going to consider the negative direction so th this part of the motion diagram describes his fall starts out at the top ends up at the surface of the trampoline with having covered a very large distance in the previous moment so he has a large downwards velocity at this point so for him to start at zero and uh, fall and end up with a large downwards velocity he must have been accelerating downwards so let's look at the graphs in that time the graph uh, for his velocity this is a velocity time graph this this can be seen is he started out in the rafters with no velocity and his velocity increased in the downwards direction or in he, he started with zero velocity and the magnitude of the velocity increased so it by the time he hit the trampoline surface here that he had a large negative velocity that is a large downwards velocity and that was caused by a steady negative acceleration this is a downwards acceleration it's a negative acceleration and that's a constant value that that value is the acceleration due to gravity so just watching somebody fall not knowing any causes you can say well his motion is downwards, his velocity is increasing downwards, so he must be accelerating downwards at least to the level of the trampoline. So we've represented that here, a constant acceleration downwards or negative, a steadily increasing velocity in the negative direction. All right, he hits the trampoline. He hits the trampoline, and what happens? He's going very quickly downwards here, a very short moment later, he stopped. 
He's not moving at the very bottom. He's moving downwards, and a moment later, he's moving upwards. So at this moment here, he must be stopped. So in a very short period of time, his down, large downwards velocity in a brief moment is taken to be zero. It's a very short period of time he's spending in the trampoline on his way down. He's stretching out the trampoline. The acceleration must be very large upwards. There's a large upward acceleration. You need a large upwards or positive acceleration to reduce the negative velocity to zero. And uh, by the way, note that the slope, uh, the slope of this velocity this linear velocity curve is negative, matching this acceleration, and the slope of this portion of the velocity curve is positive, matching this acceleration. Okay, so now he's in the bottom, uh, and now the trampoline takes him from rest, it's a very brief moment of rest, and now launches him upwards like a slingshot. Now he's on his way up, now he's left the trampoline. So let's look at the motion diagram here. On his way down, he had a very large velocity. Um, uh, a moment later, he has a, a smaller downwards velocity. And a moment later, he's a very small downwards velocity. And the next moment, he's actually stopped. Now the trampoline is launching him upwards. His velocity is from a standstill, very small amount upwards a much larger amount upwards and leaving the trampoline he has a very large upwards velocity that is all due to this positive acceleration over this period of time at this brief period of time the trampoline slowed him down from a large negative velocity to zero this next small brief period of time that he's in the trampoline the trampoline is, is launching him upwards like a slingshot so his velocity increases steadily so he has a maximal positive or upwards velocity here at this time coming out of the trampoline. Once he leaves the surface of the trampoline here, the trampoline has no effect. And he is now, from the moment he leaves the surface of the trampoline, he is under the influence of gravity. And the gravity produces a downward acceleration. So as soon as he's out of the trampoline, his, his acceleration is downwards or negative again and what do you know he slows down on his way up his large upwards velocity is reduced to zero at, at the exact same height that he left the trampoline at or almost exactly the same height there was a little bit of loss in the trampoline but it's quite a conservative system so on his way up in in this region of the motion diagram while his velocity is decreasing. It was very fast upwards coming out of the trampoline. It slows down, slows down, slows down, slows down, and comes to a stop up in the rafters. That means over this entire period of time his large initial upwards positive velocity decreases down towards zero due to this negative velocity. All right, I mean due to this negative acceleration. Now let's interpret, uh, whenever there's an acceleration, whenever there, notice there are three different periods of acceleration. There's an acceleration, there's a first phase is him falling, the second phase is when he's in the trampoline, and the third phase is when he's rising up. Those three times of, those, th those are three separate phases where the acceleration is different than the phase before and after. Uh, that will imply three distinct phases to both the velocity and the position curve, which is why when you go, when you make these diagrams, first make the acceleration diagram. We, at this point in the course, we'll only deal with constant acceleration, so it'll be some kind of, uh, of uh, very straightforward step-like function where you should be able to identify distinct phases of distinct accelerations. Establish what the acceleration is. The first phase, he was falling and had a negative acceleration. The second phase, he was being slowed down and launched back up. He was inside the trampoline, which uh, had an acceleration upwards. And then he was 
free falling. He was, uh, but of course his initial speed was upward. So uh, I put free falling in in quotes. He was still completely under the influence of gravity on his way up, slowing down. He was completely under the influence of gravity here, uh, falling downwards. So a negative acceleration implies a concave downward parabola. So there's some, so we're expecting a parabolic arc. Now his position was at a maximum when he started. He started up in the rafters. His position's at a maximum. And when he first lets go, he's not going too quickly, but he starts to drop. And he drops very rapidly by the time he's reaching the, uh, the trampoline. And the effects of the trampoline, the effects of this upward acceleration are to have an up, a concave upward uh, arc of the parabola, which takes his, he bottoms out here. This is the uh, bottom of the trampoline. But from this point on, his position is going back up. And he's, he comes up out of the trampoline and uh, he, now there's uh, the negative acceleration again. This phase is concave downwards and he arcs and he just eases up towards his final position, vertical position, which is right where he started. All right, uh, the quiz will be something similar, but not quite as difficult as this, but see if you can't connect the, his motion with this motion diagram on the way down into the trampoline on the way up from the trampoline being launched back up with first think about the acceleration uh, the phases of, of distinct acceleration uh, then translate these accelerations into uh, slopes of linear uh, the linear portions of velocity and then translate these positive and negative uh, phases of acceleration into either concave downwards or concave upwards uh, curves in position versus time graphs. Not easy. Uh, we'll, we'll revisit this topic several times uh, over the next few months.